Hello everyone, today we're going to simplify complex numbers. Firstly, we'll look at what are complex numbers, and by the end, hopefully you're able to solve some of the simple questions. To start off, let's look at where complex numbers fall in the domain of numbers. So we have natural numbers. These are your zeros, ones, twos, threes, and so on. We also have integers. These also include negative numbers, so negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and so on. Then we also have rational numbers. These include your fractions, so negative half, 0, 1, 2, and so on. We also have real numbers, and these include pi, e, square roots, 0, negative, and the positive numbers. Now, where do complex numbers fall in all of this? Complex numbers actually fall outside this. And these include the negative square roots and your imaginary numbers such as 4i, 8 plus 3i. Now your i here is your imaginary number. And it's equal to the square root of negative 1. Let's look at a quick example. Try solving the square root of negative 7. You'll quickly realize that that's not possible. But in fact, it is possible if we use complex numbers. And it's equal to square root of 7i. And the way we get there is the square root of 7 multiplied by the square root of negative 1 is equal to the square root of 7i. And remember, the square root of negative 1 is i, which is why we write the square root of 7i. Now let's look at the three major forms of complex numbers. The first one being the general form, also known as the component form. This can be expressed as z is equal to a plus ib. z here represents your complex number. a and b are real numbers. i here is your imaginary number. The other form we're going to look at is called the polar form. This can be expressed as z is equal to r bracket cos theta plus i sine theta bracket r here is your modulus. Remember this term. And this can be represented as straight bracket z straight bracket. And it's equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Now your theta is the angle. And that's equal to tan inverse b of a. And the final form we're going to look at is called the polar exponential form. This can be represented as z is equal to r e to the power of i theta. Remember, r is your modulus and theta is your angle. Now let's break down the general form. z is equal to a plus i b. Your i b is the imaginary part of z. And your a is the real part of z. The way we express this is on a complex plane. Here we have the number z. And that's the real part of z and the imaginary part of z. These are the two components of the complex plane. Your imaginary number is basically your y-axis and your real numbers go on the x-axis. And this is your modulus, which is basically the length. And this is where the angle goes. This forms a right angle triangle. And therefore, when we try to find the length of z, we can use Pythagoras theorem. We're simply trying to find the hypotenuse, which is equal to a squared plus b squared. And remember, we can use trigonometry to find the angle as well. Tan theta is equal to b on a. 
which can be written as theta is equal to 10 inverse b on a. Now, let's look at an example question. z is equal to 3 plus square root of 3i. And remember, this is in the component form. Now, let's try to convert this into a polar form and polar exponential form. If you would like, you can pause the video here and have a go at it. Now, hopefully you got the right answer. If not, we'll go through it now. Firstly, let's find the modulus of z. Remember, that is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, which in this case is 3 squared plus the square root of 3 squared, which becomes the square root of 9 plus 3, which is equal to the square root of 12, and that can be written as 2 square root 3. Now let's find theta. Now these are values for a and b. When we try to find theta, we do theta is equal to 10 inverse b on a. And therefore, theta is equal to 10 inverse root 3 on 3. And if we use the exact trig ratios, we get that theta is equal to pi on 6 which is also equal to 30 degrees. Now, if we draw out z, we see that it's in the first quadrant. Therefore, we can leave theta as positive. Now, let's convert this into the polar form. Which, remember, can be represented as r bracket cos theta plus i sine theta bracket. Now we can write this as z is equal to 2 square root 3 bracket cos pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6 bracket. Now the polar exponential form is r e to the power of i theta. Now this can be written as z is equal to 2 square root 3 r to the power of i pi on 6. Thank you for watching. If this helped you in any way, please leave a like and subscribe.